Hey, this is Jim. Welcome back to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I've got a guest today. Her name is Betsy Mays. She was actually a guest on this show a couple of years ago and had invented a game and was selling it on Amazon. And the reason I'm so passionate about this topic today is because it helps kids get excited and interested in math, specifically middle school kids. But she mentioned that even her college age kids were playing this for a New Year's recently in our interview today. It's really, really cool to hear how this has developed. And she started out as a student of our Proven Amazon course, but then slowly drifted into an area of her interest and passion. And now she's selling a whole lot of this incredible card game. And she's showing up in retail stores and she's being contacted by wholesalers. It's just a great story of how a little vision can turn into a bigger dream and then a bigger reality. And I just love seeing these kind of stories emerge from our community. So be sure and jump over and use the links in the show notes today to check out these incredible games. If you have a family with kiddos that are trying to learn math, maybe struggling with math, these card games really make it fun. I actually asked for a set of the games and she's going to send me a set uh, because we've got one kiddo in our crew that's struggling a little bit with those types of uh, challenges. So we're excited to bring that into our family. But you're going to love the story of how she's brought this about, how her business is growing, how she's specializing now. And many, many really good lessons from this. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a little different episode today. You're used to hearing us talk about people who have launched and they're selling a lot of products on Amazon, maybe a lot of different products on Amazon, uh, kind of that inch deep mile wide strategy we talk about where you're selling a little bit of a bunch of different things, building an incredible six, seven, eight figure business, right? Well, today we've got a different story. We've got a story of someone who went from that model into a specialization model and they're doing really, really well with it. So they've got more of an inch wide, mile deep strategy that they're using. And one thing, if you're listening to this show today, you're going to hear us talk about the game and she's going to show it to us. You know, it's a card game. And if you're interested, you can definitely jump over and check out the YouTube version of today's show. It will be a link in the show notes again. So you can jump over and see the games uh, or you can go to our website as well. There's a link below where you can go check that out too. So I'm going to bring Betsy on the line here in just a moment. You're going to really enjoy this episode. And one last thing before I do that, if you don't mind, Please share our episode. The only marketing that we do around here is word of mouth. People share in this show. Most people listen to it. Some people watch it on YouTube as well. But you can send people to silentgym.com. That's the only link they'll ever need. And you can hear all of our episodes, most of which are not on YouTube, which is why most of our listeners are listen only. But on occasion, we do put episodes here on YouTube like this one. So I'm going to go get Betsy on the line right now. You're going to enjoy meeting this lady she has done some pretty incredible things. Let's get her on right now. So Betsy, welcome back to the show. Great to have you on again. Thank you, Jim. I'm excited to be here. Let's jump right into it. Get us filled in. What's been going on? All right. Well, I think it was, oh shoot, two to three years ago that I visited with you and I was just starting my, um, we'll call it a private label brand and I was on Amazon. Um, I'm one of your PAC students. So that was... Um, where I'd kind of learned the tools of the trade. Thanks for the but, plug. <laughs> but like many people, I wanted to not have all my eggs in the Amazon basket. Of course. Um, I, I've had a couple issues, you know, with them that's been hard to resolve. Um, and so I'm like, wait, I don't want, I don't want everything in one place. You know, if they shut down my listing, I'm an SOL, right? Mm-hmm. Also, as you know, you don't have a relationship with your customers. They're the Amazon customers. So if I had a new product or something, I had no way to reach them. Um, so I decided to retire from the school district. So the, in 2019, the end of 2019, I told my school district that I'd be retiring at the end of my contract, which was July of 2020. And my goal then was to start my own website, but really how I was reaching people was attending conferences. So I'd go to homeschooling conferences or math teacher conferences. I'd have a vendor booth I'd present. And that's how I met a lot of people. Well, who knew when I decided to retire that we'd be having a pandemic? So all the conferences were shut down. And that was what I'd planned to do this past year of being retired was travel with my husband. We've got a trailer and we were going to camp and go to conferences across the country. So I really started focusing on building my own website and all that went in with that and how to 
find customers and drive traffic to my website. And that's been a huge learning curve, but I've, I'm pretty proud of all that I've accomplished so far. That's great. So yeah, keep the story going. I'm, I'm intrigued. And, and for those who haven't listened to the last episode, the last time you were on the show, and we'll stick a link to it in the, in the show notes as well, but um, what is the product we're talking about here? Give me, give me your elevator pitch, which I'm sure you've worked on many times. Okay, so my name is Betsy Mays, and I'm a mom and math teacher on a mission to make learning math fun. And I do that with games. So in my classroom, I created games for my students. And then with my own children, we'd play games at home to help learn math facts or whatever we were trying to learn. And then the story behind how it got started, a game I played in my classroom with a regular deck of cards was called, um, I called it Absolute Zero. And red was negative, black was positive. Absolute Zero, right? Right. It was hard for the kids to remember which was which, and that jacks were 11, queens were 12, kings 13. So I was looking for a deck of cards that had positive and negative numbers on them. I couldn't find one. And so my own children said, mom, you should create the deck. And so I did. And here it is. It's called Absolute Zero. They're cards with positive and negative numbers on it. There's quite a few different games you can play with this. Um, I've received the Parents' Choice Foundation Award for this game. So um, it's it's really been a big hit, and from this, I now have three other games Can you that open I have. Back up, and for those oh, who are sure. listening only, you know, you're you you can jump over to the YouTube link. It's going to going to be in the show notes. Uh, oh. But just want to see, I, you know, for those who are watching the YouTube version, what do those right. cards look like? Just give us a visual for. So, me. um, there's my logo, absolute zero, and then. Red is negative, so it says negative 11 on the card and shows the number negative 11. Nice. And then positive just says like this is one with a positive one. Right. And what's so cool about this it because like I was- Uno cards a little bit, right? Similar, right, yeah. right. But I couldn't find any other deck with negative numbers in them. And that's so right. important for yeah, middle school math. I've never seen a negative number on a card, but that's such a great thing. So you're teaching, basically they're working- I've never heard the rules of the game, but I'm guessing you're trying to get to zero. And so you're exactly. So you want to combine the cards in your hand to make zero. So you draw and discard until oh, the three cards okay. have a value of zero. Okay. That makes and then total so sense. yeah, got a four so the, card and two negative two cards. I I play them down in those. That's exactly. Zero. I'm trying to get exactly. rid of my cards. Exactly. That's yep. such a simple concept. No one ever came up with that before. Not you. that I know of. Yep. I love it. And so you could play it with three cards, four cards, or five cards in your hand, yeah. and it really okay. changes the strategy. Yeah. Um, and you can keep score, and whoever has the lowest score after so many rounds wins. And um, But what's so cool about this, too, is I was starting just, you know, a mom math teacher. My daughter was my graphic designer. She took graphic design in high school. And then my son helped me with the um, rules and, and how to play the game. Since then, I've hired a graphic designer for my new cards. My daughter is now a um, chemistry teacher. So she's like, mom, I don't have time to graphic design for you anymore. But um, so that that's kind of, we had a family run business there for a while. That's great. So now I've, just go ahead. to the game for a second. I'm just curious yes. because I, I, you know, I, there's a lot of homeschool families who are listeners to this show, actually, I've heard from a good number of them that part of their required weekly regimen is listening to this show for the, the students, you know, to, to try to instill an entrepreneurial spirit. So mm-hmm. talk to those families for just a second. Is this like a, a game for kindergarten through third grade kind of thing? Or can it be, it, can you make a more advanced, like, hey, the adults are having fun here too kind of oh, thing? Oh, no, this is... <laughs> I have a funny story. New Year's Eve two years ago when my son, who was 21 at the time, guess what he was doing with his friends? No way. Playing absolute zero around the kitchen table. What age is that? Like college age? Yeah. Yeah. But it's designed for middle school. So sixth grade. So 11 year olds and up would be good for absolute zero. Consequently, then I have absolute zero junior, which is a a version that's... um, has some, it has 10 frames on it to help kids. So it's for younger children. Okay. And then my newest game is 10 fish. It's like go fish, but you create tens. So So these cards- Three games now or more? Four, I have four. Yeah. So these cards, I don't know if you can see, they have fish on them. Okay. In 10 frames. And so it's like go fish where you say, hey, do you have a two? And then you can put your two and your eight together and lay them down to make 10. So Uh, making 10 is a very um, foundational math skill. Absolutely. And we want kids to be very fluent in making 10. And you can combine two or more cards to make 10. And so this is really a fun game for little ones. Four-year-olds can start playing this game all the way up through elementary school. So 10 Fish is another um, Parents' Choice Foundation award-winning game that I've created. 
You, could, could I take a little sidetrack for just a second? Sure. The reason I'm so excited about this, because some people might think, well, you know, it's just, could just as easily be a science or a history or a, you know, or any other subject that you might come up with, you know, the reading, writing, arithmetic, the mm-hmm. three R's, right? Right. Um, but math specifically for me is a, is a point of passion. I was literally 10 minutes ago before this podcast recording started talking with my wife about some math challenges, because we homeschool, some math challenges mm-hmm. we're having with our daughter and trying to, hey, we got to make this more interesting for her. We got to figure this right. out. Like, what perfect timing. Like, please send me a set of all your games. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I definitely will. I don't know if I pointed this out the last time we talked or not, but I'm going to take occasion to do it right now. There are, in the Hebrew tradition, which, you know, I, I pour myself into studying biblical principles that can be applied in a timeless fashion, regardless of your belief system, you know, we've got this culture that has accomplished incredible things based on some pretty simple, basic, timeless truths. And there's three things, according to Hebrew tradition, that go into a great education. And do you remember us talking about that, Betsy? If not, I'm sure I do, but I, I don't remember exactly what you're going to say. Okay. So, because I, I think when the topic of math comes up, I get excited mm-hmm. for this reason. So, I'm going to repeat that for those who okay. are before, but. The three are basically, the first two are, are kind of uh, spiritual and relational. The first two are understanding spiritual truths. It's kind of like the, the vertical. The next is horizontal, understanding male-female relationships, friendships, what it means to be a son, a daughter, a dad, a mom, an aunt. You know, like understanding the, what it means to be family and a friend. That's mm-hmm. what, like, those are vital. If you don't have those down in the Hebrew tradition, you're at a disadvantage. And the third one is what we're talking about right now, math. Because that's basically logic. That's being able it to is. apply facts to a scenario and make a good sound decision. And, and even in the Hebrew tradition, the word for uh, wisdom has a very strong element of math. Until you know the numbers, you're not operating with full wisdom when right. you make decisions, right? It's just that number sense, right? Having a number sense, how numbers yeah. work together. The ability to um, estimate and the ability to... Right. Say, oh, that doesn't look right. The ability to look at two products on the shelf at the store and go, that one's a better deal without right. needing your cheat code, you know? Right. Without needing your calculator. Um, those basic life skills really translate into a life well-lived. So that's why I'm so excited about math and spreading the word on your games and specific. Thank you. And, and let's drop the website a few times. Like if people are excited, can we still get you on Amazon? Oh, yes. I'm still on Amazon. Um, and then I also have my own website, gamesbyabsolutezero.com. Gamesbyabsolutezero.com. We'll stick that Correct. in the show notes too. Thank you. I, w- I want to hear from you when this podcast goes live mm-hmm. and just hear like, whoa, what a sale. <laughs> that would be fabulous. <laughs> Like, I want that for you because I'm so Thank excited you. for Thank you. what you're trying to accomplish with this. And I love the simplicity of it. Right. Because, you know, as I taught middle school math for over 20 years. And then I was my district's um, math curriculum instruction specialist in math. And then I raised my own children. And it just hurts when people say they don't like math, right? What's yeah. not to like? There's nothing. It's, we don't go around saying we don't like reading. We're not good at reading. We don't, we don't do that, right? So right. It's, it's like, it's, to me, it's like, I don't like making good decisions. That's what I just heard you say. <laughs> and then another thing is, I, I can't tell you how many times I had parents say, I don't know how to help my kids with math. I, I don't know how to help them. So I've created games. So now parents have a way to interact with their children in a positive fashion and help them with math. And um, that, that's, that's really what I'm on a mission to do is just make learning math fun. That's so. fantastic. All right. So let's, let's pull some lessons from this for, you know, our, our audience is a lot of people right. who sell on Amazon. A lot right. of them, that's their primary, or, or if not their only source of income. Right. No need to make those folks nervous because just just as a sidebar, mm-hmm. I've been teaching, what are we? I mean, we're well past a decade at this point. I have to look at a calendar to get the exact numbers, but thousands of students. We've had less than a handful of people. When I say handful, I'm like talking, you know, <laughs> on one hand, who made a mistake in their account and were permanently suspended as a result right. of something that we just scratch right. our head and go, we don't know what just happened there. Right. So it's not like you're playing this high risk game. Now there's temporary no. suspensions that happen quite Right. Soon. And that's, yeah, one of my listings got closed down for a, a couple of weeks because, and actually Amazon made the mistake. I, I do all my own right. prepping, right? So sure. I sent my stuff in. They, they relabeled the games the wrong one. So right. people, people were, were ordering the Hunch, game. but, and they shut me down. I'm like, wait a minute. I, and luckily a friend had ordered it so I could yeah. show Amazon that I pulled off the one sticker and the sticker I put on was underneath it. So right. we got it fixed, and but that took two weeks. So right, but, yeah. Yeah, that's 
that's the worst case scenario. Right. 99.9% of the time, it's going to be something that can be fixed. You're just temporarily inconvenienced. Right. But still, we are a multiple income streams right. community. This is a multiple income streams podcast. And one of the things we love about the initial models that we teach is they trail very nicely into other organic streams of income right. where you can kind of tack on. And you said you got your own website now. Mm-hmm. You're selling your product there. You're able to grow a mailing list. You're able to interact with your customers. Correct. Uh, it is so which, much fun. <laughs> have, you, have you heard this story about the, the highest level executive I ever spoke to at Amazon, the conversation that we had Mm-mm. about this exact topic? Um, this was a this was a very high level executive, and you know it's it's hard to go much higher. I'll just leave it at that. And I had the privilege of having a lunch with him, and he asked me point blank and said, "If you were in charge of Amazon, what changes would you make?" And I was blown away by like, "Wow, he actually cares." Like, <laughs> why ask me that? But he was interested in hearing my opinion and my thought. And what I fired back him in instantly without having to even prepare myself and think through it was you're not allowing your buyers and your sellers to connect and to grow communities. I told him you could probably take over Facebook's territory if you would do right. that. Because again, to jump back to Hebrew tradition, a transaction in Hebrew is basically the beginning of a lifelong mutually beneficial relationship. That's all a transaction is. Both mm-hmm. parties win initially and then they win in bigger ways going forward, which is what you're able to do with a mailing list, new games, a community, Parents helping parents, like, hey, we figured out a new way to combine these two games. And you never even thought of that, Betsy, right? Like, right. all this stuff becomes possible with a community. And Amazon saying, hey, there's no communities allowed. There's no friendships, no communication. And I said, that's a huge mistake that Amazon's making in not allowing buyers and sellers to connect and form community. Right. That's the whole point of a transaction. <laughs> in, in, in the 2,000, 2,500 year Hebrew tradition, that's the only reason we have transactions is to start a mutually beneficial relationship. And uh, so... Uh, on that note, let's transition into, there's some great reasons for you to grow your own mailing list. Amazon's not letting you do it. How's that going for you? What are you doing? And, and I um, know what prompted you to get there. Right. So on my website, I did a lot of research with, you know, what my ideal customer would be, what, be the buyer persona, what keywords I would want to try to rank for, um, all that kind of fun stuff. Right. And then People had told me you have to have a blog then, right? You have to offer content so that to attract people. So I started a blog and I've been and been doing that. I don't consider myself a writer. As a matter of fact, I kind of don't like to write, but I'm doing it. And it actually gets easier the more you do it, right? So yeah. that's been going along pretty good. Um, but then what I I've been developing content besides the blog. So for example, math and art was something I did with my kids in my classroom. So now on my YouTube channel, I have 11 math and art projects that you can follow along and create with me. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I do have a little like um, booklet that you can purchase for $5 if you wanted some more activities and the right paper and that kind of stuff. But you don't have to. You can do all the math and art projects for free. Um, what else did I do? I have some other free content that I put together and I promote. The newest one is I have a new game, a fifth game, actually. It's called Primeline. It's kind of like dominoes, you know, like Mexican train or dominoes, right. except you're matching numbers that are multiples or factors of each other. So if the end is a four, you could put a two with it because two times two is four, or you could put an eight with it because two times four is eight. But it's free. It's a free print and play download. So I have this whole new game. I've hired a graphic designer to help me with it. I've got two pregame activities that go with it to help build fact fluency skills and answer three questions on my website for me. And you've got those nine pages for free. So that's something I just started like two weeks ago, two weeks ago. And I've already got hundreds of people that have downloaded it. That's fantastic. Right. Do you have a, a Facebook page or group? I have a Facebook page for my business. I don't have a group. It's just a page. But what I've done is I've joined other relevant Facebook groups yeah. and, I'm a, I, and I participate. I don't spam. I don't sell my stuff. Now, if someone asks, hey, does anyone know of a good game? In the yeah. comment, I might say, hey, check sure. this one out. Sure. Um, but there I can promote my free stuff, right? I might say, hey, guys, check out this YouTube channel for these great videos yeah. or here's a free giveaway. Um, and I found that to be very successful. And just as a tip for you, Betsy, and for all the listeners, and you may already be doing this, I'm not sure, but for others who are out there and they, they think, I've, I've got this product or this idea. And, and just to back up one step before I say what I'm about to say, mm-hmm. I love that 
you know, I'm thinking the research and development in the first few editions of whatever you made, mm-hmm. a few hundred bucks. I mean, I'm hoping you didn't pay a right. lot more than that. Oh, right? no, no. It, it, yeah, this definitely. wasn't like a $15,000, $50,000, like, oh, oh no. Works. We just mortgaged the house. This no. is <laughs> you step slowly into this territory. Right. Something any of us are thinking right now, like, oh, I could have done that. Right. Now you've got mm-hmm. the math, the teaching, the background, mm-hmm. you know, the passion for it. Um, but as you're jumping into these Facebook groups, the thing I was going to say is, have you spent much time approaching the, I call them gatekeepers, mm-hmm. the gatekeeper strategy? Have we talked about that before? No. The gatekeeper strategy is, well, the best example of a student of mine that used it and went on to succeed wildly has got to be Mike Brown of Death Wish Coffee. Okay. And that's one of the concepts that's in the uh, my 101 free marketing book. I'll stick a link to that in the show notes. Probably should just Stick a link to the PDF down. I've got it right here. No way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Of course I do. (laughs) You've got to make sure to tell everybody right now that we did not plan that. We didn't. No, but this this is one of my go tos. I I I can't get through it all because you read it and you stumble across something like, oh, I got to go try that. I have to go do that. And then you come back, you read a little more, you find something else you have to use. Oh so, my gosh, nope, you got me a little right misty eyed. Haven't had anyone <laughs> flash that book? I, I wrote that book in two thousand. And I'm not going to forget where I'm at because I've created like three trails where you got to hit at this point. Okay. Okay. But since you flashed that book, I got to point out that book was written in 2011, but I'm hearing it's a week doesn't go by that I'm hearing from someone that doesn't pick it up and apply because my goal when I wrote that book was to make it evergreen, meaning mm-hmm. I'm to be able to pick this up. Literally, I was thinking 10 years from now, I'm not going to put you know, hey, go to this website and sign up for this offer. I'm going to put like, here's the concept. Here's the principle. Right. The websites will change. The traffic sources will change. But here's the principles. And I had to come up with over 100 ways, free and right. low cost ways to drive traffic to your idea or concept or business, right? And that was a challenge. And I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to just kind of fluff off a few of them. Uh, and interestingly enough, I just talked to the guy every penny of that book that's ever, including the advance I received from the publisher, has gone to a great inner city ministry that has a real, very entrepreneurial heart. I'm going to have him on the show soon. I just talked to him recently, Kevin Ramsby. Uh, so I'm proud of that book, proud to promote it. If you buy a copy of it, you're supporting a great ministry. I haven't taken a penny from it. But let's get back to where we were before you got me all emotional, <laughs> showing me a cover right there next to your desk. I love yep. that. And the point is, one of those chapters, it sounds like maybe you haven't got there yet, is it talks about gatekeepers, the gatekeeper strategy. My buddy, uh, Mike Brown of Death Wish Coffee, which is the number one social media brand coffee on the internet. It's the number four best selling, last time I talked to him, grocery item on Amazon. Wow. Number four best selling grocery item on Amazon. That's no joke, folks. If you just type in the keyword coffee on amazon.com, He'll any given day will be in the top three or four coffees next to Folgers and Dunkin' Donuts. And there's Mike, Death Wish Coffee, right? He wrote me a letter. The first correspondence he ever sent me was he had deployed this completely free concept of gatekeeper marketing. And what that means is you're in these Facebook groups, right? That's here. Any mm-hmm. of us can do this with the concept that we have. We go to them and we basically find a creative way to one, earn their respect and trust. I'm not here to siphon off what you've built. I'm here to support Mm -hmm. what you've built. I'm here. I'm a huge fan of what you do. I love what you do. I'm not just going to show up and take a bunch of your audience and go away. Right. Right. So you establish that rapport, that trust. You let them know who you are. You tell them what you respect and admire about what they've built. It never, I mean, you did actually, we just illustrated that Betsy. Here's a book that's sold. You know, I don't know how many copies we've sold of that book that you just showed me tens of thousands, but it gets me emotional when um, like, for example, I had someone walk up next to me in an airport. This happened one time. I don't think this happens to me all the time. <laughs> one time. And he's carrying a copy of that book that you just flashed. And he said, uh, is this is this you? And I'm like, holy cow, someone's reading my book and came up to me in an airport with it in their <laughs> hand. And someone I never knew. Like, that's a huge deal when people recognize and appreciate the work that you've done. I'm sure the same thing happens with you. If someone were to come up to you with their game, you see some kids in an airport, you know, sitting there and they're <laughs> playing your game. And they would actually connect the dots and be like, this is yours? Wow, that's, you know, it touches you. So you have that opportunity to do that with gatekeepers. Those are the people who have taken the time, effort, blood, sweat, tears, energy. It's not easy to have an audience of people listening to you. It's actually a high pressure situation. Mm -hmm. So if you come in, Betsy, as someone that says, hey, I'm here to support you. I'm here to make you look good. I'm here to be 
Oprah Winfrey's favorite guest, if you will. I use the Oprah analogy a lot because she never had a guest on her show that made her look like a fool. She right. never had a guest on her show that in the end burned her because they were just there to take advantage of the platform. She did her homework. Mm -hmm. Her look good and created a three-way win, meaning Oprah won. But more importantly, the guest also won, which is you, Betsy, or whoever it is approaching the gatekeeper. And the third, perhaps the most important, I would say, argue, inarguably the most important, is the audience wins somehow. What's in it for them? What are they getting? If you can create three-way wins, that's the gatekeeper strategy. So with these other Facebook groups you're in, it's one thing to just provide free content and interact. It's another thing to be very intentional about approaching the person who owns, operates, manages, and you know the gatekeeper, the person keeping out the crazies. That's a pretty mm -hmm. good job. And if you can make their life easier and bring value to that community, that's the gatekeeper strategy. So I would Great say approach them, approach them boldly. Share your story. Say, hey, I want, I want you to be a part of the story. It could be as simple as saying, hey, I want you to get a cut of every sale I make. Let's do a promo mm -hmm. together. It's in the way you find these people, you, you write down on a list. You, you get a pad of paper and a pen and, and you write down the names. I need actual names, not websites, not right. blogs, not YouTube channels, but people, individuals. Mm -hmm. And you approach them and you earn their trust and you give them compliments and you support them when they have an article or, you know, so that's a very long, I just took the microphone for a long period of time, but that's a significant strategy. If you ask Mike Brown to this day, I mean, he ended up winning a Super Bowl commercial wow. because of the support of our community and, and, and we got behind him and these strategies, like that's a big deal. Uh, these, this stuff works. Uh, if you ask him to this day, like what was it that he, it was, it was the gatekeeper strategy, contacting influencers, people who have the audience you wish you had. Right. And rather than try to take it from them, mm -hmm. cooperate. Why not? Yeah. Right? Sounds Why not good. Just go in and add value. So fabulous. Hey, business building warrior Jim here. We're proud to partner up with a new sponsor, helium10.com. They've got a discount code just for you as a listener of this community. That's SSMR, as in silent sales machine radio. That's your discount code when you go check them out. They got a great offer for you. Over a million users around the world trust Helium 10 to help them make great decisions and grow their Amazon business. They're tracking 2 billion different products at any given time, guys. That's pretty impressive. Go check out helium10.com, discount code SSMR. People who have the audience you wish you had. Right. And rather than try to take it from them, mm -hmm. cooperate. Why not? Yeah, right? sounds good. Just go in and add value. So fabulous. That's the long pitch. We just had many <laughs> coaching sessions. Next time we Thank have you, you on the show a couple of years from now, you're going to have five or 10 gatekeeper strategy success stories for us. I will. Like, I'm even thinking like Khan Academy. Why not? Right. Mm -hmm. right? right? Why not approach those guys mm -hmm. and say, hey, I, I want to do a video on Khan Academy? Because it's one thing to see a teacher write scribbles on a board and mm -hmm. you know, every video I've seen, that's kind of what they do. It's another right. thing to put something in a kid's hand. You've right. got to recognize that, right? I almost want to be your agent and do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could afford you, Jim. <laughs> totally free. I mean, what have I tried well, to do yes, this yes. You bought the proven Amazon course, right? <laughs> I did. You know, I, I'm all about win-win proposals. Like, right. you know, hey, just give me my 10% if it works out. How, how about that? <laughs> I love it. Okay, I'm going to take you up on that. Hey, we'll talk um, later. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not either. <laughs> Thank you. A couple other things I wanted to share with the listeners, though, um, kind of going along with um, having an audience. I found that one of my best ways to connect with um, people that wanted to hear what I had to say was through other bloggers or, you know, there's a lot of homeschool bloggers. There's a lot of math, mommy math people out there. So I'd reach out to them and say, hey, I've got these really cool games. Would you be interested in reviewing, giving me an honest review? Some of them do it for free. Others want you to pay them something for it, which if it's reasonable, I've, I've done a few of those. But what's happened because I've done that, other people are hearing about it and reaching out to me. So now that I have my own website, now that my product's getting out there in different channels, I've had some brick and mortar stores contact me wanting to carry my product. I've had an online pretty big catalog company for educational supplies contact me saying, can we carry your product? Wow. This is something I hadn't planned. I just thought I'd be a retailer selling a few sure. decks on my website, a couple hundred yeah. on Amazon. And that's what I was going to do. These stores we'd recognize? Where can we look for your stuff? 
Um, not yet. There's small. There's just some small mom and pop type stores, oh, and then the other one. Seen enough. My right, instinct right. is you'll have someone hear this show and reach out to you and go, I can get you in Barnes & Noble if you're interested, you know? Like, oh, that would be that, so cool. Right. Yeah. You're, 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 you know, inches from those kinds of things happening. And uh, man, I, is it, there's so many little mini lessons popping in my head. I hate to take right. the microphone over again, but here's another really, really good one is you are benefiting from the law of specialization, which is another timeless Hebrew principle. Once you say, you know what, I'm going to be known for this inch wide, mile deep thing. This mm-hmm. is, you know, I've got many aspects of my life. I enjoy art and music and, right. and you know, I do things with my kids. But when it comes to professionally, if I'm on an elevator and someone says, oh, so how do you provide value to the world? Mm-hmm. You In other words, what do you do for a living? My elevator pitch is the same. It's consistent. It's solid. And I go deep on that little tiny thing. Right. There's a benefit to that versus, oh, you know what? I know how to use the internet, do interesting stuff. You know, like right. that's not going to get your phone ringing. So when I first started this journey and I had your program, I did sell other stuff. I did retail arbitrage. I did online arbitrage. What's I had a with that? 10, right. And, and I was learning That's how the system worked. Right. And, mm-hmm. but then I decided, wait, I really want to focus on this one thing for a while. I want to give this all my time and energy and resources mm-hmm. and see where I can take it. So now on Amazon, that's all I have are my yeah. four games plus a bundle. So I created like a little fun coloring book to go with 10 fish. So I sell the coloring book with this. And I yeah. did that on KDP, right? I made my own on, on, on Kindle Direct Publishing. I also have a merch account, but my merch account, I just, I play with it when I have time. But anyway, right. um, so yeah, that specialization, I decided this, yeah. this is what I'm going to do and focus on. So um, mm-hmm. that's when I really started seeing. And, and multiple streams can flow out of that too. Right. Uh, meaning you know, consulting, teaching, people coming right. to you and saying, hey, okay, you've launched your own brand with some, some degree of mm-hmm. success. I can tell you right now, Betsy, if we put together an offer and said, you get to work with Betsy one-on-one to help launch your brand and grow your brand and use the strategies that she's learned over time, and we're going to charge X dollars for that, there'd be people sign up for that. But that's all flowing through your specialty. That's right. not opening up a dog groomer <laughs> and uh, right. some people think multiple streams is like spreading yourself so thin you don't get anything done. No, it's it all feeds into the same stream, Correct. right? It, which flows into the same river, it's the same big body of water at the end, which is you're kind of known for, you know, Betsy, who uses the internet creatively to help kids learn math through games they can hold in their hand and have fun with their parents. You know, that's what I'm, that's the image I'm painting. So if exactly. any Thank topics you. ever come up, I'm like, hey, that's... Oh, that's my friend Betsy. <laughs> and her website is, remind us again. Games by absolute zero.com. Games by absolute zero.com. Correct. Thank you. This is so great. Well, anything else for the listeners? Give us some inspiration or lessons or some, you know, did you stub your toe along the way? Did you wake up panicked any time along the way in the middle of the night thinking, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> um. No, I don't think so because I really thought about this and planned for it um, as far as, you know, leaving my full-time job and taking this on. I just think that you always have to be learning, right? So I'm always taking another little course on this or learning about this. I know you've got a new course on Pinterest coming out, I think this week it was anyway. And, you know, that's something else. I'm forcing you into it. (laughs) Okay, sounds good. You know, because I do have a Pinterest account that I try to do, yeah. and it's just those kind of things. You've just always got to be learning. Um, my thing though would be maybe not to like you kind of said, don't spread too thin. So like, there's so many social media platforms. I went ahead and signed up for all of them right away because I thought I had to have a Twitter or LinkedIn, all those things. Right. I don't know how to use them all. I don't have time to use them all. Yeah. So maybe pick one or two that you want to specialize in first and get really good at, and then you can expand to the other ones. Yeah. It's Our too much to take on all at once. He, he calls it spokes in a wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, all these different strategies that you can, you know, and the more of them you get, the stronger mm-hmm. your wheel gets, you know, and, mm-hmm. but you don't have to get into all of them. Absolutely. You right. don't need it. But over time, why not? I mean, it, there's so many free options available to you. There are. Just if be in constant content creation mode. Um, one of the tips that comes to mind for, for you, Betsy, and for those out there who are trying to start to, to launch their own thing, having contests to your community or in right. other communities is one, having user-created content. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking you could have a contest, have some kind of significant prize or something where, you know, win free games for life from us, for you and five friends. Any new game we come out with, every game we have, you're going to get it free for life. And, um, you know, something, 
creative. Mm -hmm. Say, all you have to do is film your family playing this game and upload it to YouTube. That's all you got to do to enter. And you send us a link, right? I mean, just those kind of have some fun with it. So you're not the one creating the content. It's your users, your consumers. And and it's those kind of ideas to go back to my buddy, Mike Brown, Death Wish, Coffee. I mean, they're masterful at this. You know, they've got people getting tattoos of their (laughs) their logo on their shoulder. And and I don't know if Mike's okay with me telling everybody this or not. It seems like he's pretty public about it. He doesn't even drink coffee last time I talked to him, but he's got like, (laughs) he's got the Harley Davidson crowd of coffee drinkers. And he's like, if you saw him, he's like the, he could be an accountant. (laughs) Right. (laughs) He would never get a tattoo. And he's running this company that has this culture of just, because he turned the content over to the people his product appealed to. And they've run with it. So in a little way, you know, there's a lot of good lessons there. I really need him to write a book, actually. I'm going to think I'm going to get on about that because he's, he's, he's done a masterful job well beyond anything I ever trained him to do. Uh, they're just doing some phenomenal stuff. But yeah, get your, the, the lesson was get your crowd creating content with you and for you. So now you're appearing in places you wouldn't have otherwise and you haven't had to do the work. You've given them an incentive to do that with you. I wrote that down. Awesome. I think it's in the book somewhere. Probably one of those chapters you haven't had for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. So what what else, anything else, Betsy, you've been a true delight to hang out with today. I'm excited Thank you. To, to get this episode out to people. I think you're going to get a lot of fun, positive feedback. But where are you on Facebook? You gave us your website. Is there? I'm assuming there's a link on your website to your Facebook page. There is, right. Yeah. It's. It's. Okay. I believe it's at Absolute Zero Game. I have to okay. double check what that is, but... No, that's okay. Um, as long as it's on your yeah. website, people will find yeah, you. Yeah, it is. I it just is, want to encourage definitely. folks to get on the mailing list. If This is a great gift. Uh, you know, by the time this episode's coming out, maybe you're starting to think holiday gifts and such. You know, if you've got anyone that middle school age or even, you know, your college Great age, stocking stuffers. Exactly. <laughs> right? And seriously, if I could put in a request, not to put you on the spot, but with thousands of listeners right now listening and wondering mm-hmm. what you're going to say, mm-hmm. <laughs> would you send me some of your games, please? <laughs> I definitely will. Show yeah, me wait. your address, Jim. I, I, I will. I definitely will. I won't do it on the air because, uh, well, it's not like I'm hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone um, show up at your yeah, door. <laughs> I will, we will put them to good use, seriously, because no joke, we were just talking minutes before this episode and with my wife about our youngest and uh, some math challenges we're having. So, yeah. You know, one thing, Jimmy asked me what advice I'd give or what I, it's do what you enjoy, right? Because I'm just trying to think if I was trying to sell a widget that I wasn't passionate about, Hmm. I don't know how well I'd do it that right. But because I'm passionate about math and math education and, and kids enjoying it and families enjoying time together, that's why I think I'm being, because it's my passion. It's truly what I, I believe in. Oh, I, I, and that totally resonates. Totally resonates. I could launch off into lesson land there, but I think I've got <laughs> enough Hebrew bombs in everybody today because I'm not going to do that again. Uh, although I've got, we could do another half hour on what you just said, but uh, when you're serving others well, it, it, it's easy to get passionate about that. And that just right. resonates with you because I, I can just tell without you having told me, you've received positive feedback from people, from families, from others who think, we're using this, it's helping, it's working, oh, definitely. this is good stuff right? That fuels you in a way that nothing else can, including financial success. But the financial success always follows if you're serving well, right? And you are. Well, you didn't share any numbers with us. Are you comfortable with that? Is that something you could do? You know, right now, um, so Amazon's holding steady. I sell several hundred decks a month on Amazon. I'm still just getting my website up and my website's up and going, but the sales on there, it's, they're just trickling in just a few a week. Right. Um, it's not many right now. But what I am finding, like I kind of mentioned, was people contacting me for that wholesale aspect, right? Yeah. Um, I've had some school districts reach out to me and want class sets of my cards, or I've had, you know, brick and mortar stores ask if they could carry them. So th- those are the kind of things I wasn't expecting that are, are really nice to happen. And another thing, I just got an email from someone, um, pretty big um, math guru in in the math world, and she wants me to be a guest speaker at her next virtual conference. So all of these things are coming about because of that free content I'm putting out there, the videos I'm making and the emails I'm sending. So that's just kind of things I wasn't planning on or thinking would happen, but that are nice benefits and, and probably bigger than I could have imagined, right? If, if you were a stock, I'm buying. I'm telling you right Thank now. Thank you. <laughs> As you get on all these platforms 
and you're exposed to new audiences, you've got to get those email addresses. You've got to be right. very intentional, you know, send them straight to a very specific offer. I want to get you, you know, and engage them. Um, have you read uh, a good book for you at this point might be um, Story Brand. Have you read that yet? Yes. Yeah, so, yep. I'm okay. a, a big, big, big follower. Yep. Okay, cool. So there's some good concepts in there that'll be beneficial mm-hmm. to you, you, you where, you know, the premise is you, you make your user, your customer, the hero of their own mm-hmm. story kind of thing. And and especially when you deal with kids, you know, there's some mm-hmm. very great things you can do. You can build incentives in and, you know, speed games and such, you know. Right. Um, Right. Just to where the, the heroes are kind of emerging from your community and so many fun ways to engage with right. what you've got rocking. And, and hopefully many lessons are being pulled from this conversation for those who are thinking, oh, I've always kind of wanted to do this. I've always wanted to do... We've got other game inventors and, and creators and, and authors in our audience. Um, hopefully Something else that just came to mind that I'm in the work on. Um, there's a lady that's writing children's books on math, and, and everyone can learn math. Was was her first book, and so I actually reached out to her through Facebook and said, "Hey, we have a similar mission. We want kids to like math. I make games. You write books. Let's get together." So we're just going to write about each other's product on our blog as a start, right? Promote mm-hmm. each other, and then we're going to look at ways together down the road to to work together. So that was really exciting. Um, yeah. She's in Canada, so now I've got to get my car on Amazon CA so I can sell them there. <laughs> we can help you with that. It's not complicated. It's not yep. complicated. It's easily, easily done. It, it's just international. Wow. What yep. a great so story. I'm excited. I, Thank you. you know, I, just, I just have a feeling that uh, I, and I'm quite frequently correct on these. And I probably said something along these lines when we first interviewed, although I didn't go back and review it, but you're onto something very, very special. It's because your heart's in it, one, and, and you're well qualified. Um, I would, you know, I would encourage you to begin. This is just another little tip. This is one of the tips from the book, I believe, but you may have read this part, but begin calling yourself a world's foremost expert. Have you done that? I, yeah, I read that part. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> you need to do it. This is me saying, please begin to do it a world's foremost expert on, and you could be more eloquent at this point than I am, but begin calling yourself that at making math fun for kids by putting the right tools in their hands, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's intriguing. That's interesting. That'll get you interviews. That'll get you like, who are you to call yourself a world's foremost expert? And you can come back and say, well, who do you know that's created a game that thousands of kids have used to go from thinking math is boring to math is fun? Do you know anyone? (laughs) Right? Call yourself a world's foremost expert. Not necessarily the, but a world's foremost expert. And uh, if you're comfortable and confident, hey, go for the the word, the word. <laughs> right? There was a guy that did that with um, dating books. He just decided to start doing it. He called himself the world's foremost expert. I can't remember who it was, but suddenly just started selling tons of books. And he's like, I just decided to call myself that one day. I didn't necessarily have any qualifications outside of anybody else, but I just called myself that. Um, Love it. You're actually well qualified. And so I would encourage you to do that. And same goes for the listeners as well. You know, that whole law of specialization, inch wide, mile deep. Right. Right. Uh, there's something very special that can happen there. Well, Betsy, it's been awesome hanging out with you for a few Thank minutes. Thank you, Jim. Wait this to is new great. Update. And, and uh, seriously, we're here to support as you go on this journey. And um, if you want someone to make a few phone calls and get, get a little commission out of what you've got, I'm your guy. <laughs> no, I, Let's do I it. I want this story to be huge. I, like, I, I think you're going to have a hard time keeping me from spreading the word on this one. Um, and I'm not looking for more clients. I just love when this community s- produces success stories. And uh, I think you're onto something pretty special. So thank I'm sure you. the listeners enjoyed it as well. So Betsy, thank you. And I appreciate the husband. Um, you said he was kind of guarding the door from deliveries. and Right. Yeah. <laughs> we have some furniture being delivered today. So he's standing watch. So pre- appreciate him uh, standing guard for so we could get this episode in. And, and for the listeners who have joined us today, and I sure hope you appreciate and, and value as much as I do the time that we get to spend with such great people from our community. And, and it's been a great time with Betsy Mays today. Your, your website, once again, Absolute. Games by Absolute Games Zero. By absolute Zero. Dot com. Dot com. Yep. By absolute Zero. Dot com. That link will be in the show notes. All the resources we talked about today. I'll try to find a PDF link to that 101 free marketing book so no one has to go buy it. But keep in mind, if you do buy it, all the money's going to an inner city missions guy who's, uh, you can read about him in the book actually. And 
he, he's got a very entrepreneurial spirit. So that's what you'll be supporting with that book. And it's been a blessing to be able to do that. But all those links and stuff in the show notes, but hey, all the business building warriors out there who joined us today, God bless you. Please spread the word. Silentgym.com is all you got to share with your friends or neighbors or whoever it is that's interested in using the internet creatively to launch and grow income streams. That's what we do here. We'll have another great episode for you again real soon. Hey, before we go, just a quick thing. I wanted to remind you that Helium 10 has become a great sponsor of this show. They've got an offer exclusive for the audience, the listeners, the business building warriors of this community. If you go to helium10.com and use the discount code SSMR, as in silent sales machine radio, you get the tool that's being used by over 1 million Amazon sellers at this point. They're actively tracking over... 2 billion different products on Amazon at any given time, providing data and helping you make good decisions on what products you should and shouldn't sell, as well as an entire suite of products that help you run your entire Amazon business instead of piecing it together a little bit from here, a little bit from there. It's a great tool. Many, many coaches on our team use it, the content creators. I know that Nathan, our coaching director, swears by it as well. So we were very excited to bring them on as a sponsor. Again, Helium 10, discount code SSMR, and I'll take good care of you. Hey, God bless you, business building warrior.